Okay, so for the sake of those that are going to watch the recording, Britt, this is our second review for Ed Ready material. Um, uh, some of these are just going to be tips and techniques. Other ones will go through and do everything in completion. Some of them, if they're similar, we'll just do one unless somebody needs the second one. So, okay, if you look at the first question here, it says, it is not possible to divide five by zero because there's no number you can blank by zero to get five. Um, so basically you just have to think there, what do we do to undo division? Division goes hand in hand with multiplication. So you can't multiply any number by zero and get five out. So that's why if anyone was ever wondering why you can't divide by zero, that is why. So the answer there that Ed Ready is looking for will be multiply. Okay. All right, and uh, we have some more simplification problems. We went over a couple, a couple of these last time. So let's go ahead and do the first one. Uh, the only difference with the second one is when you have a radical like this, it's a square root, you have to do whatever is underneath which four minus three will give you one. And then you take the square root of one, which is just one. So you guys can do this one on your own, but we'll do this one together. So uh, you wanna work with the parentheses first and then go through and do each set like you would. So 16 divided by two will give us eight. And then we wanna do two times three there. So that'll give us six. And then we wanna do inside the parentheses next. So eight minus six will be two. So we'll have two times five parentheses still hold for our two. So we will do that first. So two times 10 minus two, multiplication first before subtraction. And we have an answer of 18, okay. All right, so that is the process there. All right, you guys can ask questions at any point. Again, the second simplification problem I'll let you guys do. I do have it worked out, so if you do need it, just let me know and I can shoot you the solution. Okay, so for this one, we need to compute. So basically when it's written like that, you can just go ahead and write it like a division problem. Um, when you're working through this, the first thing I would do is check for if we can get to the nine. Well, three times three is nine. So let's do 312 times three. So three times two will give us six. Three times one will give us three. And three times three will give us nine. So that works. Three, nine, three, six. All right, and we have five left. Bring down the six, 56. Obviously 312 is much bigger than 56, so that's gonna be a zero with a remainder of 56. So we have verified their correct answer. Okay. Again, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. Um, so finding the product here, uh, if you take a look, you can see that we have a number in the front, which is a four and a number in the front for the other part, which is a one. And then all the other numbers involved in this multiplication problem are zeros. So here is your trick. You can multiply the first two. So four times one will give you a four. And then all you have to do is add the zeros. So there are of zeros. There are seven zeros in this problem, two, four, and three more, so seven. And then we're just going to add them to the four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is your overall answer. Okay. Um, technique for equivalent fractions. The first thing you guys want to do is put all fractions into simplest form. 
So if we rewrite the first two, 12 and 20 both share a four. So you have three over five. 10 and 25 both share a five. So you have two over five. Do you see how two fifths and three fifths are not equivalent? Because two and three are different. So that's not going to work. Um, three fourths is already in lowest terms. So we just have to see if eight over 16 is equal to three fourths. But we know that eight goes into 16 two times. So that's one half compared to three fourths. And again, not correct. Five thirds and three fifths, even though five thirds is an improper fraction, it's in lowest terms. So again, this one is a no. To verify that this is the correct answer, 12 and 18 both share a six. So that'll be two thirds. And 10 fifteenths, they both share a five. So again, two thirds. So this is our yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, true statements. So the first technique here I would give you is you want to turn all of your fractions into decimals. Um, I'm not going to do this one. I do have it done for you. You guys can do this one and verify it for yourself. But basically, uh, you would just take in your calculator three divided by five and you'll get 0 0.6. And if you do four over seven, you're going to get 0 0.571. Well, 0 0.6 is bigger than 0 0.571. So this is true, but you can check the false ones as well. And you can see the technique that we use here. All right. I'm going to assume you guys don't have questions, so we'll keep it going. Uh, estimating total bills. So for this problem, all you had to do is you have to pay attention to which place you're supposed to round to. So in this case, it's the tens. So for the electric bill, If we're rounding 42.6 to the nearest tens, you want to look at the two because it's in the ones place. So we're still going to be at $40. TV streaming, 27.9. So you're going to look at the seven. So it's going to round up to $30. And rent is... 587 and 70 cents. We're going to again look at the seven that's in the ones place. So that's going to give us 590. And then for our total, we just want to add all three of those together. So you should get 660. I will warn everybody that estimating is definitely something that a lot of students struggle with. Sometimes they look at the wrong uh, placement, you know, so here it's very easy that you could round to the ones instead of the tens. Um, you could round one to tens, one to ones and one to hundreds, you know, so just pay attention. And if you take your time, you should be good to go. Okay. Um, a division application problem here, all we're going to do is we're going to find out how many 12 sets of 12s are in 1,150. So all right. Um, you can kind of cheat a little bit on this question because it's multiple choice. So go ahead and start with a nine. Um, Obviously, 960 does not make sense. So you're not going to put a nine in the hundreds place. You'll put a nine in the tens place. And 12 times nine will give us a 108. So we will take 108 away from 115. And that leaves us with 70. Well, we're bringing down the zero, so seven, bring down the zero. And then five goes 
with 12, 60 times. And then we have a remainder of 10. So there we have verified the answer. Okay. All right. If you had this as a completion problem instead of a multiple choice problem, you would just write it out the same way they're writing it. 95 full truckloads with 10 cars on the 96 truck. Um, and also pay attention to what they want. Like, so this is how many full trucks are needed and how many cars will be on the last truck. So some of your math teachers might have a different question, but you would have the same numbers in the same situation. So just be careful. Okay. Um, again, this is another estimation, so nearest 10, and it is the um, it's an application-based problem for the rounding. So we want to go to the nearest 10. So for this measurement here, we're going to look at the four in the ones place, which will give us a rounded answer of 10 feet here. And then for the bottom, we're going to look at the three in the ones place, which will give us 20, 20. And to find the area, which I do recommend that you all memorize um, your formulas because you do not get a formula sheet on the uh, placement test. So um, I would recommend that you try to memorize as many of these as possible. We're going to do length times width here, which means we will take 10. Well, technically 20 times 10. And that will give us an area of 200 feet squared. Okay. Okay. We have one, one more uh, with that type. Um, this is just finding regular area. Again, we're going to do length times width. So this time though, it is not rounded. So it'll take 914 times 323. You are allowed to use a basic calculator. And if you don't have access to one, there is a calculator on the computer that they allow you to use for the placement test. So you may certainly do that. Uh, so this will give you 295,222. And I always say units squared. Um, so if they would have given you inches or feet or miles, then you could have used that. But since they didn't, you need to know that you do have units here, even if they haven't given it to you. And those units, because they are an area, will be squared. Okay, um, next one's a little bit different. Uh, we have to use kind of like, uh, I guess some logical reasoning here uh, in what's called a let statement. So it says Micah is twice as old as Richard. Richard is four times as old as Ken and Ken is six years old. How old is Micah? So what I did is I said, let's let Micah equal to x. So, and then, and then Richard, Richard is going to be y. And then we could give Ken uh, z. We can make Ken z, but we also know that Ken is six years old. So you can say it like that. And then what we can do is we can come up here and we can say, well, how else can we rewrite what we know? Well, we know that Micah is twice as old as Richard. So two times Richard would be two Y. And then Richard is four times Ken. So Y would be four Z or four times six. So we know that Richard is 24. And what we really care about is how old Micah is. Well, Micah is two times 24. So then Micah would have to be 48 years old.
Okay. All right. Um, definitely, if you had an issue with this problem, um, you want to review this concept either in Canvas or in EdReady, or you can rewatch this review. But you want to definitely get this kind of algebraic logical reasoning thought processes down. Okay, um, this one again, a lot of people had issues with rounding. So you're rounding to the nearest thousand. So you want to look at the number in the hundreds place. In this case, it's a four. So you're going to stay with 65,000. Okay. And if you're, if we're going a little too fast in the video, it's just because I know it's on a recording and you guys can pause it as you work through it a little bit later. All right, so finding the area of a composite figure, what we're gonna do is first we have to figure out what figures we have. And I do apologize that this one got cut off just a little bit, but uh, that should be okay, because we'll just make it, there we go. And we'll add in the 12 inches again. Okay. So we have um, a half circle and a square. And it does tell us that we have a square and a semicircle. But in case you had to just look at it and know without being told that, that is what you have. So area total, which I always rec recommend to do it this way, is equal to area of the half circle, which is the same thing as a semicircle plus the area of the square. Area of the square we know is side squared or side times side. So that's just gonna be 12 times 12, or you could write it as 12 squared. They mean the same thing. They will get you the same result. Now, what you have to remember about finding the area of a half circle is you have to multiply it by one half. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. And in this case, we were given the diameter equal to six. So the radius is going to be half of our diameter. So radius is going to be six divided by two which means the radius is equal to th uh, You know what? Nope. Mess that up. Somebody tell me why. Anyone out there? Okay. So I have to mark that on my stuff. That radius is actually six. So that changes my answer a little bit, but that's okay. We'll work it out together. So one half, the, di the radius, sorry, is six. So six squared pi, but pi, they tell us to use 3.14. So let's go ahead and add that in. So times 3.14 plus 12 squared. Okay. All right, area total equals one half. Six squared is 36 times 3.14. 12 squared is 144. So your area total you can use calculator. I'm going to, so half of 36 is 18. 18 times 3.14 is 56.52 plus 144 is 252. So 200.52 inches area is always squared. Okay. All right. 
Um, when they say enter only the number, that means for this programming, they are not expecting you to put in the unit. So you can ignore the unit for uh, your for your answer. And let me just write it down. And choose square. Okay. All right. Okay, this is like the second or, we have 18 total questions. So this is number 15. All right, so in this one, we have to find the perimeter and the total area of the composite shape shown below. And all the measurements are given in inches, use 3.14 uh, if any formulas are used. So again, we have a half a circle here we can see that we have a di a almost didn't get a radius of three, and then we have a diameter actually of six. You can see that here, but we only care about the radius. And then we have our height, and our base is actually going to be six. Okay, so first things first, let's do our perimeter. We're going to have the perimeter of a half circle plus the perimeter of the triangle, which I'll do the symbol there to not confuse you with total. Okay. So to find this, we do one half our circumference plus uh, basically the outside edges. So for us, we're going to do 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5. Now you may can be confused because a triangle only has three sides. But here, I'm just kind of not giving you that 6 yet. So that's where that came from. OK. All right, so. Uh, circumference is 2 pi r, so 2 pi r, but what you're going to realize here is the 2s will cancel, so it's just 3.14 times 3. Plus 6 plus 5 plus 5. All right, so 3.14 times 3 will give you 9.42. And 5 plus 5 and 6 is 16. So our perimeter total is 25.42. And it gave us inches. Okay. But we're not finished because now we have to figure out our area. So our area total, again, will be the area of a half circle. But now we're going to add it to the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So half a area of the circle pi r squared plus one half base times height. So we would have one half, one half times three squared times 3.14 plus one half times six times four. We get the four because you want the height of the triangle, which is not the hypotenuse, okay? Six times four will give you 24. 24 and a half will be 12. Three squared is nine. Nine times 3.14 is 28.26. Half of 28.26 is 14.13. So your area total is 26.13 inches 
squared. Okay. Again, make sure if you didn't copy that down while I went over it, that you make sure that you watch the video later. All right. I am going to work out these last two and then uh, last two, last three, and then you will be good to go to get back on ed ready. So um, these are special cases of multiplication. Here we have two sets of binomials. Uh, the first one you can't really tell right away because you have it written as a squared term. So we can actually rewrite this as two binomials, x plus four times x plus four. And then we're gonna use a technique called foiling. So it's spelled that way because it's first times first. So x times x will give us x squared. Let me just do this for you. And then for uh, outer will be uh, four times x, so plus four x. Inner will be plus four x. And then last, four times four is 16. And then you just combine the middle terms. So you end up with x squared plus eight x plus 16. So we have verified that answer, even though I wrote it very terribly. There they are together. All right. Next one. Um, this one's a little bit nicer for you because they do have it written out. But what you can notice is that they have opposite signs. So when you multiply these, you're actually going to get a canceled middle term. So very similarly, we have x squared now plus 4x minus 4x minus 16. Here you can see the inside terms will cancel. So we have x squared minus 16 as our answer and it is verified. Okay, All right. And the last one for today is uh, pretty similar, but you have the variable being a y instead of an x. Uh, not really a big difference, just more of uh, convention. We typically use x's, but does not mean anything for us. So first will be 12y times 12y, so that's 144y squared. Then outer, inner, last, so then we have minus uh, 60y minus 60y plus 25. Bring our, in, our inner terms together. So we have 144y squared minus 120y plus 25. And our answer is verified. OK. All right. So that's all the questions that I was able to gather from your um, from your Ed Readies, especially since no one sent me any. I had to go in and I kind of just pulled um, some ones that I thought everyone could kind of glean some information from. So I will stop that.